So this is basically going to be my Ice Mage Rapier build. This is basically what I run in open world and for Outpost Rush for those who are interested in wondering what I'm running. I am running medium as you can see uh, primarily because most of the damage abilities that uh, Ice Mage has, especially your burst, is going to be in close proximity. So more often than not, when you're running Rapier and Ice Gauntlet, you're more of a medium range uh, defensive attack player. And that's why I went with medium for the extra resistance, as you can see, currently only sitting at 576, which is all right. So running 22.9. So in terms of, I'm going to go with the stats. So since we are in most of the time you're going to be in melee range especially because there's a lot of people with gap closers from great axe uh, ex you know etc so you're going to want a little bit of extra con which is why i went with 150 150 into con plus it gives you the 10 percent critical damage reduction i don't have a lot of resilient currently in my build so i thought this was best i'd probably still go this route for the added uh, damage reduction and then try to shoot for 250 with food into int and then 50 into dex for the extra five percent critical now in, we're gonna, we're gonna look over first the the rapier the way i set my rapier up i actually need to take these two out i was just using this temporarily but a lot of the damage from the rapier on this build is going to come from flurry because we're not in the traditional where you would usually see light armor players where they'll kind of roll dodge behind the person and then go in for excuse me going for like a heavy attack from behind they would basically stun the person once they get the stun off they would roll dodge behind and then go for a backstab we're not doing that most of our damage is going to come from flurry and i'll, I'll and quite a bit of healing is going to come from flurry as well for the primary reason because we want a little bit more sustained hp wise to sit in fights a little bit longer against melee players especially because that's typically who you're going to counter pretty heavily with this particular build so you're going to want a refreshing strike i would definitely go with 10 percent more damage uh, when your target has greater than 50 percent you're going to go uh, three points i really don't uh, four points the last point in flurry finalized not not really worth uh, utilizing and of course you don't need the bleed since we're not running any bleed so that'll give you the opportunity uh, to either go with light uh, light edge or you can go with um, heavy puncture actually not heavy puncture anything basically not having to do with bleed so you probably go maybe go with uh 10 percent more damage when health you basically have a little bit of options or grab the final passive with interruption not a lot of options as there's a quite a few passives that revolve around bleeding or you can just go right ahead and go right through if you want the if you want the um the stagger not really all that important so a lot of the damage is going to come from here basically you're going to utilize repost uh repost is going to be of course obviously got buffs has a very short duration and it's going to save you from taking a lot of damage from melee players but it also works against range so for example uh, a lot of easier things to repose would be like for example if the person was running you know clear out if they're wearing shockwave or if they're utilizing path of destiny these typically have uh, slower typically have slower animation so it makes it much easier uh, for you to basically to block them as well as things like, for example, if the person was running uh, shield rush or if the person was running reverse stab, these typically have a little bit slower animation. So it allows you to uh, go in for go in for a repost or if for some reason the person was running, let's say execute, execute. Very good. Now, repost is also good at defending against gravity. Well, so if you get gravity, well, Gravity will only last three seconds, so you can basically repost and then go right into a flurry for a little bit of damage. It's also going to give you a little bit of healing with the perk that we took. And then you've also got Fliche, which is very good for creating space or closing the gap. It's only 10 meters. Uh, if you're fighting, for example, like a, if you're fighting, for example, a ranged mage like a ice gauntlet and 
Ice Gauntlet and Fire Staff or Fire Staff and Rapier, or you're fighting against a bow user or a musket user, etc. This is basically how you're going to kind of close the gap uh, between them and try to stay on them as much as possible. And then, of course, you can block a lot of ranged abilities with your repost especially other abilities, for example, like Burnout. You can block the damage from Burnout. You can block the damage from Fireball. Basically, you can block any, almost just about any single target ability, anything from, you know, if you see the person going in for a uh, for an evade shot and you don't want to eat the, the knockback, just go right ahead and repost. Repost it. You won't take any damage. You won't eat the knockback, etc. So this is going to shut down a lot of damage. Of course, you're going to have access to three dodges being in being in medium. And then most, more than likely, you're going to get a lot of flurry damage fighting most melee players. It'll be a little bit harder uh, to, to make full use of it with other ranged players because they're always going to constantly kite, constantly be kiting you and so flurry is going to be you know obviously a stationary ability um that's going to probably get maybe one or two hits off as the person is fleeing so it is it, it is kind of what it is in terms of ice gauntlet i have always loved the pylon pylon is very good i think a lot of people play ice gauntlet and they pick most of the defensive abilities in ice gauntlet namely Ice Shower and Entomb. That is primarily because those abilities were bugged and overperforming and they needed to be brought down a peg. You'd often see people basically pop food and pop a, a, reju a rejuvenation potion, go right into their Entomb, and they would sit there for you know a good 10, 10 seconds of basically healing to full. And of course, uh, getting back all of their cooldowns. It was a completely broken playstyle, needed to be nerfed. And thankfully it did a lot of people who crutched on Entomb, which i spoke often of and whenever we're talking about uh, ice gauntlet a lot of bad players crunched on Entomb. and so more than likely a lot of people either realize it's not that great still useful for 1v1s not that useful when you're getting surrounded and then of course uh, we saw the changes to ice shower which also needed to be adjusted primarily culprit was heavy freeze which i really never sought the need uh, to make use of but it is still a viable option but now it requires a skilled player to make use of it versus someone just basically dropping ice shower or dropping ice storm and then just constantly heavy attacking you over and over again i showed routinely how it's really stupid to sit here and um, try to try to jump out of it because this is how slow you move even slower than this when you're sitting in the ice storm it reduces your speed by 25 percent, which also reduces your speed um, while you're jumping as well as if you ate the ice shower it reduces you by an additional 50 percent, which made it super easy just to sit there even post nerf even with um excuse me not post nerf even with the ability uh, even you, with you being able to jump out of the roof it made it stupid easy to sit there and just heavy attack while the person was just sitting here kind of tapping space which is why in that video by um I forget who that streamer is that I covered, where even in his own video, he showed how easy it was to kill players, especially in light or in medium, um, who were just sitting there doing that dumb jump animation. Anyway, moving along. One of, this, one of the mistakes you also see a lot of Ice Storm, uh, Ice Mages, or I should say Ice Gauntlet players do, is they throw out their ability far out. And you barely get any of the damage so ice gauntlet especially when you look at the way most people played it they would you know this is primarily melee obviously melee and ice storm can be set at range but you miss out on a lot of the passives especially in critical frost which increases your chance of dealing of dealing critical damage when hitting an enemy in a frosted area and so if you toss your frosted area because that's what it does it creates a frosted area and if you toss this all the way out and the person just walks out of it you have lost a huge amount of damage uh, from your critical chance as well as for example um, if you're utilizing energized energized critical um, you're gonna miss out on quite a bit of damage 
uh, just le basically letting people walk out of your ice storm as well as of course when it comes to some of the passes which increases damage for each enemy hit and of course if that person um, is below 50 percent as it says inc it says incoming damage is increased by 10 percent for three seconds to enemies in ice storm while they are below 50 percent health so that person would take additional damage if they sit in for the full duration as well as taking extra critical damage and of course if you have the last passives last passive they're going to take extra damage uh, per person sitting in the storm for each for each enemy in the storm so if you just kind of throw it out there and you get you know maybe a half a second or the person is in it you've completely wasted that ability and it's typically what i see a lot of ice storm players uh, do they typically throw it out at range it might get you know a couple of ticks or two and the vast majority of the damage gets basically negated because the person walks out of it the other thing is that for a melee build i mean you're a melee mage uh, especially on a build like this and so what it allows you to do either the person is going to sit in them in it and that you're just going to sit there and heavy attack um you're going to deal extra damage the person is going to take extra damage as well from the passive because you're also missing out on the ultimate chill passive so if you just throw out your ice storm all the way out there you're missing out on an additional 25 percent while the person is sitting in the ice storm for the additional three seconds which means when you set up for your combo which is basically you're going to drop storm you're going to go in for a heavy attack and immediately hit him with a burst from ice spike if that person is not sitting in your ice storm you're completely missing out on huge amounts of damage and then of course making use of turret turret is excellent use for people who are looking for a little it's going to give you a little bit more range i'm going to go ahead and look at the passives so the turret it only deals 50 50 weapon damage but it's a lot of added extra damage from especially when you dodge so it's 50 it's 20 meter range and the passive is kind of irrelevant it lasts for 45 seconds as long as it continuously continuously deals damage it has a cooldown of less than 10 seconds as it says here increases damage by 10 percent against individuals who are slowed uh, so for the duration that your opponent is sitting in um, ice storm they're going to take additional 10 percent damage from the pylon the other thing is that of course ice pollen will stay topped off this is really the important piece which is when you dodge roll so you're going to want to save your dodges for when your hp is full so that the pylon attacks faster which is what this passive does which is why i invested a couple of uh, traits into dodge for the cooldown as well which we'll talk about in a second so when you're full hp and you have your pylon down so i think typically it's about every three seconds and when you dodge roll while you're at full uh, full stamina the pylon hits like almost every second and it deals quite a bit of damage i'll post a clip and you can see both of the clips where uh, I, I showcase the utilization of ice pylon and you can see in the clip how much damage it deals so that when you're kiting or maybe you're blocking and uh, your line of sighting the pylon will still deal damage to your opponent so it feels a little bit more like a dot but it deals way more damage than probably any dot in the game <laughs> very good most people don't make uh use of it Mo like i said most people will go the route of ice uh, you know ice shower with entomb and then uh, ice storm like barely anybody uses ice spike ice spike is your literally your bread and butter for bursting opponents down uh, it deals a tremendous amount of damage has a lot of aoe effects has a very uh, short cooldown also has a stagger connected to it it makes no sense why i see so many mages that so many ice gauntlet players who complain about the lack of damage and then don't use the 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 biggest burst that they have in their entire kit and it just goes to show you that a lot of people who played ice mage were typically very gimmicky players that relied on the broken passive uh, from heavy frost they would just sit there you know throw ice shower down the person would get stuck in it and they would just sit there and heavy attack them over and over again the person would eat ridiculous amounts of heavy heavy damage uh, heavy attack damage to the face 
they were like, see, I told you I'm good at the game. And then that got nerfed and everybody and their mom cried. But this the only thing that happens is that the cream always rises to the top. And that's what happens typically with nerfs. It shakes out those who are bandwagon, who are popping on the bandwagon. And those who are really good at the play style will continue to play it. And they'll, they'll know exactly what needed to be nerfed and what needed to be changed. The ice bike the is an eight meter range and this is why i said ice gauntlet plays very close you're going to typically be playing this play style less than uh, 10 meters from your opponent an ice bike is going to be what you're going to be rotating with with heavy you know, heavy attacks light attacks into an ice bike into uh the spike damage where it goes on it says um cooldown is reduced right if, as long as you can land your ability um it says cooldown is reduced for this ability by 10% if an enemy is hit by the mighty spike and the mighty spike is where a lot of damage is going to come it deals 157 additional damage on top of the 56% that they take from just the path so already you're looking at 210% weapon damage on an 8 second rotation for and then of course you get cooldown you get a little pseudo execute, meaning you'll deal 20% more damage if your opponent is below 30% HP. Increases the damage and adds a stagger. Right, so now we're looking at 220% damage on an eight second rotation. And then of course you've got Mighty Spike Reach, which is um, fires from the side dealing additional Mighty Spike damage. It says each shard has a six meter range dealing an additional 118 percent damage so it, if you land it of course in a certain spot you'll be able to deal over 300 and like 40 percent weapon damage and that's not including the extra bonus damage from ultimate chill which is typically why you're going to set up with um ice storm ice storm you drop ice storm down obviously your pylon is already going to be down sitting behind you in the start of a fight and you're going to heavy attack and immediately go right in for the ice spike burst it's going to deal huge amounts of damage and then of course you can switch over to your back bar more than likely your opponent is going to try to cc you at that point because they've just eaten so much damage to the face and you immediately go in for the stun typically what they're going to do they can sit there and start spamming left click or they go right in and go for a cc you're going to immediately cc the person and either go in for a heavy attack either from the side reposition yourself because that will reset the burst from the pylon right because the pylon is going to be sitting behind you and then once you start engaging with your opponent you go in for a stun immediately more than likely you will be at full stamina again so when you dodge roll either to the side or back whatever the pylon is going to start basically shooting like a turret it's going to start shooting like every second so you're going to get a lot of damage out of that and then you'll go right in for if you've taken any damage the flurry will give you a little bit of hp back now looking at we were talking about the the abilities and we covered the attributes and then now we're going to go into the gear so like i said we are running medium armor medium medium armor of course just going to try to get the attributes i can um, this is not crafted gear, this is just gear I literally bought once I hit level 60. So I'm 576, I didn't go out there and grind for any of this gear. It was available easily on the auction house. So I did want a little bit of critical from Brazil. You can get this from the PV, I believe from the PVE vendor, I think. Actually no, I bought this actually from the trading post. I didn't get any of my gear from the vendor. As you can see, because the vendor gear is only 520 gear score, so it's very low. Next piece that I got was Refreshing Ward. So you're going to take damage. You're going to be fighting a lot of melee players. You will be taking damage. So more than likely, I, I wanted to, uh, because you're fairly tanky, you're going to have a little bit of healing from your rapier ability. You're going to have, obviously, healing over time, etc. Um, so I wanted to have a little bit of extra reduction in my abilities. Because some of the abilities are a little longer than others. Uh, namely, Fouché, it's like 16 seconds, as well as... Um, as well as Ice Storm has almost a 20 second CD. So if I can, as I'm trying to squeeze in, excuse me, basically as much cooldown re reduction as I can. Next thing I went with, which was Flurry, uh, Leeching Flurry. So 27% of the damage that you do with Flurry is going to be given back to you as HP. And Flurry has a very short cooldown. 
as you can see, 15 seconds, but each hit of flurry is going to reduce flurry's cooldown by seven seconds. So if you get all of the hits from flurry, it's going to give you um, seven second, seven percent. So you get 35 percent cooldown from flurry, including an additional one percent per hit. So that gives you 40 percent reduction for hit per hit if flurry crits each crit is going to give you an additional five seconds of cooldown per hit so in theory you could get as 25 uh, plus an additional 35 so that's 50 60 percent cooldown from basically your main spam mobile it deals quite a bit of damage but more importantly it's there uh, so that you can get a little bit of hp to help you sustain in the fight most of the the jabs are not all that high especially from you know your light attacks you're only dealing 100 percent while some of the other light attacks and medium attacks might deal a little bit more and heavy attacks only deal 133 your medium your medium swipes are only going to deal 66 percent so in terms of trading especially if you're trading against you know a great x user and with um, a, a hammer you're going to get out traded because they're going to do much damage more than likely they're going to be in heavy so a little bit of extra region that you're going to get from leeching flurry of course is very much welcome of course you can i use this exact same setup in pve as well and as you can see i have not socketed any of my my gear just as of yet um obviously you're going to want sundering repost this is primarily useful for fighting heavy armor users um, because it reduces their damage absorption by 14% for 10 seconds. And it's a, a pretty short um, pretty short cooldown. So that's definitely uh, necessary. Also, I took Refreshing Evasion, which reduces active cooldowns by just about 1% after exiting the dodge roll animation. So when you use an ability, and then you dodge roll, you will, as you can see right there, you'll see... Um, the ability flashes flashes like a little white and that's basically um, how you're getting a little bit of cooldown reduction again going to be rolled you're going to be roll dodging anyway for damage avoidance you're going to be roll dodging as well to increase the damage of the pylon so i figured why not works it worked out fine by me as well as unending throw frost effects remain on enemies for two seconds after exiting ice storm so that's going to play into your passive which is the frost effects which means the slow so the slow they're going to still be slow walking out of so they're still going to be slow walking out of the ice storm as well as um, the ultimate chill is still going to be on them as well as um, the effect of critical frost will also be still active on them for an additional two seconds after they walk out of the pylon after they walk out of the ice storm so you'll get another opportunity to burst with um, ice bite in terms of the gauntlet the gauntlet base has a lower critical chance which is why you, you would definitely want keen on your weapon now if you want the critical damage that's completely up to you I preferred having guaranteed damage than uh, RNG from the critical modifier. So that, of course, it increases your sustain and your, you know, you're going to have a lot of sustain from critical rejuvenation, which you gain 15 mana whenever you critically hit a target. And of course, if you do critical damage with Ice Storm, if you do, if the pylon crits, um, if ice spike crits, if your light light attacks or heavy attack crits, you're going to deal added added damage. And of course, taking cold reach. This is debatable because most of the time you're going to be sitting on less than 15%. So you could trade cold reach for the heavy freeze. And of course, the heavy freeze freeze is going to be situational. It's going to give you a five second cooldown. And of course, it's going to proc off of Ice Storm. So when a person is in Ice Storm, Heavy Attack, Root into the Burst, um, more than likely I'll probably end up switching out Cold Reach. I just used it for leveling purposes. But for people who want to trade from range, 
against perhaps like a bow user, which I don't recommend, you're going to get out traded. Or if you're fighting, for example, like a fire staff user, you're still more than likely get out traded. But if you want the extra 15%, but for the most part, you're going to come in contact with a lot of melee builds, primarily because of lack of mobility. Your, your only mo mobility for mobility is going to be your cliche, and it's got a fairly decent cooldown. And it's not like you're, you know, light armor, fire staff, you've got fliche, roll dodge, you've got evade, like we used to typically see on all of these mage builds. This is typically going to be a short range, less than eight meters build uh, for PvP. And so that's why I went with um, the extra light damage and heavy attacks. You're going to deal roughly 10% on your heavy attacks, as well as having a chance to critical. And then, of course, keenly empowered on the back bar uh on critical you're gonna have access to more damage which is typically try to eke out more damage so that you'll gain a little bit more healing um, when you're going into your flurries especially against other melee build i for in terms of the slots i do recommend going with uh thrust damage and we'll look at you know the jewelry um, i went with fortified recovery which is when you are below 50 percent you gain 10% mitigation. You also have a passive in your tree here called Defiant Freeze, which grants you Fortify for two seconds, which is why the shorter your cooldowns are, the more you are able to keep up Defiant Freeze. So you get 20% every two seconds, which reduces your damage. And procs every time you cast an ability. So of course, the shorter you can get ice spike on a cooldown the more you will proc um defiant free so if you can get this down uh with dodge rolls and passives and etc you can get this down to maybe eight seconds that means you've got you know six six seconds of downtime etc so with that reason which is one of the reasons why i went with um fortify so that when you do start to get a little bit low it does give you five seconds of 10 percent damage reduction and then of course thrust protection a lot of damage in this game especially now comes primarily from thrust right so you want to think other rapier players and their heavy attacks you're talking about spear players there's a lot of spear players that typically uh who play you know bow main but have a spear on the back bar and a lot of their damage on their back bar is going to come from thrust damage and so that's why I decided to go with thrust protection. And it's why I recommend going five pieces um, of thrust over going with the mixed uh, wilderness. This was just on it when I bought it. Uh, it didn't have an option, but that's what I would go with. If you have the option, I would definitely go with thrust because most of the damage that you're going to take is from range, from either bow users or from musket players. And so this allows you to negate up to 25% of their damage just from um, basically slotting specifically for thrust damage as well as um, reducing the amount of damage that you take from light armor rapier users who are going to go in they're going to go for the stun they're going to roll dodge behind you and then go in for a critical back step so trying to negate as much damage as possible from uh, either range or more bursty you know setups namely light armor and rapier with either uh, more than likely light armor and rapier and it's going to have a uh, fire staff on the back bar. And then of course thrust for the added 4.4 uh, reduction to thrust damage. And then of course this was just slotted naturally um, with the physical ward for 2.5%. Again, I didn't have a choice. Um, I would probably go with three pieces of fire resistance over ice because typically ice most of the ice damage or i should say most of the ice players typically play in melee and don't utilize a lot of the abilities most of them use entomb they use ice shower uh, and ice storm so that's where their biggest damage is going to come from heavy attacks which you can block now you can you can just when you're when you're on your ice bar you can just block you have the ability to block ccs on your on your ice on your ice gauntlet so if you see somebody coming in um, with a crowd control ability you can block it you don't have to automatically you know eat it or switch over to your a repost you can just stay on your frost bar and just block some of the damage and your block and block for you can choose to um 
block with your Magicka. You, you, you'll lose a, three Magicka and gain stamina for added roll dodges, etc. It's completely up to you. One of the things that I'm, I, which I'll probably switch out, is drop Cold Reach and go for blocking blocking stamina. It's a very good, uh, it's a very good passive. Anyway, last but not least, um, you're definitely going to want refreshing. To be you're going to see that in most builds for the reduction in cooldown. Ice damage, very important. You want to maximize your damage. Yeah, obviously, I would go with an Ice Glyph in the Rapier because it will scale off the Int. And then go with a Gambit for when your stamina is not full. You will deal an additional, um, I think it's 15% damage. That's basically what I would put here. Uh, so you want to try to maximize your damage. And then, of course, last but, not, last but not least, which is refreshing for the Potion cooldown. You can use the best potion you can, use the best food that you can, um, get the best regen potion that you can, etc. And then typically I do recommend, even if you don't make use, make use of weak oak flesh bomb that reduces um, physical damage by an additional 10% for 20 seconds or until you've been hit six times. And so since more than likely you're going to be being attacked by you know, great axe users hammer users especially with all the cc's i do recommend of course it works uh fairly well it does have a little bit long of a cooldown of about two minutes but this can definitely save you when you're in when you're in a pinch and i think that's basically about it uh, again this is by no means min maxed but this is definitely the direction i would go i would probably just try to eke out some more some more resilient to get a little bit of, cr of critical damage reduction and then just basically like i said socket it completely for thrust damage like i said most of the damage is going to come from thrust rapier is thrust spear damage is thrust bow damage is thrust as well as musket and this is typically where your burst is going to come in you got burst here burst here and burst here and then basically a lot of the cc's um you'll be able to reduce some of the damage that's why i recommend going with uh, all on all five pieces thrust uh, thrust reduction and then on your jewelry i would go with reduction to fire because that's the next thing that you're going to be taking in that's the next uh, probably the highest damage that you'll take will more than likely be from fire anyway i'm going to leave it here feel free to like comment and subscribe let me know your thoughts below and i'll check you out next time